Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade game video for you this evening. I've got something super special here. Can you believe this? This is a 1978-ish Midway Space Invaders cocktail table. So, they came out in 78. Taito, Taito designed them in Japan, licensed it to Midway for the United States. Midway made the upright cabinets first and then they made these super cool cocktail cabinets. They sold a ton of the uprights. I don't know how many of the cocktails they sold, but this thing was like the coolest thing of all time whenever this came out. This is the original dedicated cocktail cabinet you would buy it from the distributor and it came in a box <laughs> looking just like this look at this thing and it's lasted all these years and it's still working whenever we got it it was still working I fixed a few sounds on it we rebuilt the monitor just so it'd be nice and reliable cleaned it up a little bit but you're looking at 1978 pretty much all original We'll check it all out. I'm just trying to give you a walk around of it. Wow. This is not the little kid's toy one. This is the real one. 43 years old. Um, so the cocktails were more for bars, things like that, where they didn't want something that was as... Uh, garish as the upright ones. So the upright ones had a lot of artwork and stuff on them. They're more for, uh, you know, they're not all like this, but you could make the argument that they're more for teenagers or kids. But So they, they came up with the idea to make these cocktail cabinets that were a little more mature. So you could put these in a bar or something. A lot of people call them Pizza Hut cabinets. I never heard much about uh, Space Invaders being in Pizza Huts, but I always heard that Pac-Mans and Miss Pac-Mans were in a lot of Pizza Huts. What's that? Pac-Man? Oh, you don't remember what those look like? Oh, well, let me show you real quick. So there's 1978's Space Invaders. This is 1980's Pac-Man. All original. Original cabinet. Original artwork. Original control panels. Still has the CRT in it. Beautiful. What do you think about that? And then they, um, what was the next one? Oh, that's right. The next one was Miss Pac-Man. That's right. In 1981, Miss Pac-Man cocktail cabinet. Mrs. Pac-Man. They finally changed the door. So on Mrs. Pac-Man, the door has two coin mechs. <laughs> and the control panels, are, the control panels are all different. So, uh, Got about a nine inch control panel on Miss Pac Man. Pac Man's a little bit bigger, about an 11 inch control panel. But Space Invaders. It's a completely different look, like the cabinet's completely different. It's a different color, but it's also constructed different. It does have the same coin door that Pac Man would have later. Um, and it has this cool little door here on the back. with the board mounted on the door. I won't open it up because you gotta kinda shouldn't really do it when it's on. Um, and the speaker grills mounted up here. So you can hear all seven of the uh, Space Invaders sounds. Now since th this was before four-way game, um, four-way joysticks really, there may have been some games already that had that, but they hadn't really um, standardized a joystick. A lot of games just use buttons. So uh, they were still kind of feeling that process out, right? So the way they, on the upright, there are two buttons. One moves left, one moves right, and then there's a fire button. On the cocktail, the midway cocktail, they made this little lever thing. So you push to the left, you move left, you push to the right, you move right. And the thing actually works great. It works great. 
uh, on, spa on Space Invaders, there's really, now I'm not the world's greatest Space Invader player, pl Invaders player, so someone who's really good at it may differ with this, but if you're just an average player like I am, there's really no benefit to having a nice joystick or anything. A little lever that moves you left and right works fine because you're, the, the, you don't need a super amount of precision <laughs> left and right. Um, and you just have one fire button, so there's two start buttons though, right? So let's read the instructions in case you don't know how to play it. Insert the coin. Select one or two players. Two players alternate play. To move laser base right or left, move lever. To fire a laser, press button. Game ends when players' laser bases are all hit by invaders' missiles or in, when invaders overrun the base. Wow. How cool is that? So they had a little piece of paper you could change here because the dip switches allow you to change what you get an extra laser base at. So there's one that said 1,000. I don't know. I think maybe you could change it to 1,500 or something. And it had this cool kind of gradient on the glass of these arrows. Midway Space Invaders. They made they made several games after this. So they made Space Invaders Deluxe or Deluxe Space Invaders, however you prefer. And when they did it for the cocktail cabinet, they called it uh, or uh, Tato called it Space Invaders Two, which was. Uh, it had a, I, I, if I, I think the, the Tato version was actually in color, um, but the Midway one just used color overlays or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. So the, the Tato cocktail version of Space Invaders Deluxe was called Space Invaders 2, and it was actually in color. So we're talking red, green, blue, and white. Very simple colors back then, you know. Uh, they also made a game called Space Invaders 2, not to be confused with Space Invaders Part 2. So there's Space Invaders and then Space Invaders Deluxe. Okay? The cocktail version of Space Invaders Deluxe was called Space Invaders Part 2. But they also made a game called Space Invaders 2, that was a cocktail, where you played against each other. It was in a cocktail that looked just like this. but. On, you had four bases on this side and four bases on this side, and you you shot at the other player and their bases, and there were invaders in the middle and everything. I'd really like to get that one just to film and play a little bit. I've seen it a bunch over the years, but I've never actually had one. Um, so they've made a ton of Space Invaders games over the years because it made a freaking fortune. A fortune. You've probably all heard the legend that in, in uh, Japan it was so popular that they ran out of... Uh, whatever the coin is, I, I want to just say yen, but I don't know what it, I don't know. Uh, the, they ran out of the coin that you need to play it, like that there was a shortage of it because they were all in the, uh, <laughs> in the uh, parlors, the, 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 the arcades. So I've seen pictures of arcades that they would have over there where the walls were all lined with Space Invaders. It's the same game. They would have 30 of them in a room. The, the game was so popular that they could have 30 of the same title and people playing all of them. And I'm sure they had a few of these cocktails mixed in, or probably they probably had a Tato version, but you get my point. This thing was popular. Made a ton of money. And to this day, we still get people asking about it. Okay, so let's read these instructions now. What do you think? It says, defense instructions. Insert coin. Select one or two players buttons on player one control panel. Two players alternate play to move laser base, so it's the same as the other ones. Mid, uh, Midway Manufacturing Company, 1979. Okay, so yeah, it was 79. That makes more sense. So I, the, the first Midway one, would the uprights would have been 78. They probably made those for a long time because they sold a ton of them. And then uh, they probably would have made the cocktails in 79. That makes sense. Yeah, it's in very good shape. I could point out some flaws. You've probably seen some yourself. But uh, all in all, wonderful. Now, they do not make a replacement glass for this yet. So you can see that there are scratches all over the top. They're not so bad that you can't play it. As you can see, it's very presentable when you're playing it. But if you let the light hit it, you can see just how scratched up they get. 
Now, me personally, it doesn't bother me a bit. If I had this in my house, there's no way in hell I'd change that top. I kind of like that it's got all the scratches because it, you know, it's 43 years, 42 years of uh, people using it. It doesn't bother me at all because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, disrupt the, the gameplay. And there's nothing, nobody's uh, scratched any nasty words in it or anything like that. It's just scratches from where. It doesn't bother me at all. The showcases in my shop here are like that too. They have scratches all over the top of them. It doesn't bother me at all. But some people, this drives them freaking crazy. And so it would be very tempting to take that top off of there and put a brand new piece of glass on it. But if you did that, you wouldn't have all the artwork on it because they don't make one with the artwork silk screened on it yet. One of these days, somebody will probably reproduce that. Um, and then uh, whoever owns this at that point can buy a brand new one if it's made nice and make this thing look brand new again. But until then, it's just going to keep its original top with its original art and its scratches that it earned in the uh, in the arcade. <laughs> so... Uh, we got this in, like I said, it still worked, but uh, we rebuilt the monitor, put cat, a cat kit in it just to uh, make it more reliable in case some problems pop up in the future. It's black and white, old school Wells Garner monitor. Uh, and then the game board had a few sound issues where the uh, a couple of the sounds didn't work. The, the player, the missile shot didn't work, and the saucer um, shot, where the saucer gets shot, didn't work. So we uh, we fixed that up. On the soundboard on these, there's a bunch of chips, uh, little op amps, they call them, uh, operational amps, that uh, are LM3900. And there's, in the schematics, if you look at them, it shows you which ones make which sound. And so if you have a missing sound, you can easily just go through and replace the, uh, the op amps that make that sound, and it fixes it right up. So... That's what we were able to do. So we got the thing sounding good. It's turned up pretty loud. I'm gonna set up the tripod so we can play it. Uh, I got it turned up kind of loud, but look, this this is some of the most iconic game uh, sound effects of all time, <laughs> right? So we, we got to hear it. Uh, my buddy Matt. By the way, there's two mats. There's an arcade mat and a video game mat. You may have seen a uh, video game mat playing the dartboard not too long ago, but the arcade mat is Matt Newton. He's the guy that does the uh, armor and things. We share his videos from time to time. He's the uh, uh, Elven Forge. Back in the day, he was really into arcade games, and he, he, used to, he told me this cool story about, the, uh, about Space Invaders. He used to go to the mall all the time, and there was an arcade in the mall, and at one point in the mall, at one time, they had a Space Invaders arcade game sitting out in the um, just in the, the walkway of the mall. And it was on the second floor all the way at one end of the mall. And you know how malls are, you know, huge and cavernous, right? So he said that when he was a kid, he can still remember being at the other end of the mall and you could hear somebody playing Space Invaders on that Space Invaders machine up on the top level at the other end of the mall because you could hear the, uh, the invaders marching. In the, in the schematics, they call it the step. So they call the sound effect the step. Because if you look, they're actually stepping. It froze, but you, you, you know what I mean. They're actually stepping to the side, and then they come down. So they call it the step. Then the, the way it does that is it has four frequencies that it plays just over and over again. So it goes, dun, 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 dun. dun. Dun, dun, dun. And you know, once you, every time you kill one of the invaders, it gets a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little faster until it's dun, 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 dun. And it's just like the, like the Jaws theme song. It's just iconic. And it's, it's just a couple little notes, just a couple little frequencies that it's playing uh, through some discrete components on the soundboard to make that amazing sound to the point that in his mind, you know, as a, as a little kid, that stuck with him all these years. So some, some engineer came up with just that simple little idea 
the whole time it's playing, have it thump, 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 thump. And then make it faster as, there, as less of them are on the screen and they move a little faster. You know? And it's, it was, it was uh, iconic enough that it's, it's stuck in his brain and all of our brains. All of us know what I'm talking about, right? We all know what I'm talking about whenever I do that sound. You've heard it before. It's in a part of your brain all these years, 42 years, if, you're, if you are 42 years old. Um, they've been doing that. And he, and he told me how he just remembers hearing that, and it echoed through the mall. Like, you could hear it all the way at the other end of the mall. Dum, 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 dum. Somebody was up there playing that game. How cool is that? All right, so I'll set up the tripod, and we'll listen to it and play it a little bit and uh, enjoy this beautiful classic. Okay, folks, we're going to play it a little bit. If I can not knock the tripod over. Can you see good? You look like you can. Check this out. You probably can't see it. I'll show it to you here in a minute. I got my old school Space Invaders uh, Atari game. Let me see if I can... Is it bright enough to see that? Can you see everything? Let's see... I think it'll look all right if I brighten it up. Ah, you can't see it. I'll show it to you here in a minute. I think the screen will look good like that, though. Let me see if I can just make it look about how it looks in here. That's about how it looks here while I'm playing it. All right, so I'm not great at this. By the way, like I said, it's turned up loud. I'm not great at this, but the, the, only, the only trick I know is you try to shoot the lanes on the outside first, like the, the columns on the outside first, because by doing that, it takes them longer to march across the screen, step across the screen. So if you're, if you're let's say, nine invaders wide or whatever, 10 invaders wide, they bump into the edge of the screen quicker, which means they come down quicker. But if you're only two invaders wide, they have to walk all the way across the screen and then walk all the way back across the screen again, and it means they drop, they drop slower. Okay. Look, now they have to walk all the way across. that one. The saucer comes out after a certain number of shots. So it's not a timed thing. There's not even a time limit or anything. It's just after you shoot a certain number of times, the saucer comes out. And I got the extra man because I got 10,000 points. Whoa. Got you, sucker. So same thing. You want to get rid of some of the side columns first.
Suckers. Oh, they got me again. Oh, man. I shorted the sound out. No. Whoa, come on now. Come on. I think it glitched. All right. I got 3,440 points. Now. That's not a miracle or anything. <laughs> That's not a record. That's not bad. I got to like the third or fourth board. That's pretty good, right? Let's try it one more time. Now, usually when I play games, any game, bowling or anything, I actually get worse as time goes on. on the second shot. You're basically going to get the same points from the invaders on each board. So your extra points are going to come from the, uh, the saucer. Thank <laughs> you. 
They're getting serious with it. Look at him. You gotta watch that whenever you're going all the way across like that. Because they're gonna drop, they're gonna drop on you the whole time. So I need to, I really need to get rid of that guy on the left. But I don't necessarily need to get rid of him until he's marching back to the left. You know what I mean? got me. Look, I didn't even do as good that time. 29.40. 34.40 was my high. Let's try one more time. What do you think? So see, like, it doesn't, the left column you don't need to get rid of until they're almost at the left side. But you can't really go over and get rid of the right column at the beginning because um, you can't get all the way across the screen in time. And once you get them down like this, you don't really need to do the columns anymore. You just need to kill all of them. So what I'm trying to do is the third column, get rid of it before it gets past the, uh, the base. And then I got rid of the second column. And then try to get rid of the first column before they get all the way to the edge and reverse. So now I've already got rid of three columns and it just slows everything down. still be able to get the third column before it gets to the edge. Nope. See, I meant the, the one guy got past me. That, that guy. Look at him. Look at him. I'm in trouble now. 
Once they get that low, you are in trouble. The, the, the shields are basically useless. Once they get down to the shields like that, there's not there's not much you can do, or not, not much I can do. All right, thirty-two ten. One more try. I put a dollar in, you know. Can't spend all of my allowance on space invaders. faster it seemed like sucker see I didn't get my extra man until the second screen this time because I missed the saucer attention. Has that dashed my hopes of beating the high score? Got you, sucker. shoot their shots but you got to be right dead on it if they get if, if their shot slides by your shot it'll kill you might get it See how when you miss a shot, it messes you up. Uh. By the way, I don't shoot as good going to the go <laughs> going back to the left. I'm just not as good. Uh. All right, well there it is. So cool, so cool. What do you think? I love it. 
So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it all for you. Do you remember playing this back in the day? Give me your Space Invaders stories. Maybe you uh, had one at your local mall that was <laughs> just like Matt's. Look how cool they're looking lit up, too. Let me move the tripod. Look at that. Pretty awesome. So let us know what you think down below. Let me show you the Space Invaders game. There it is. The old Atari game. Pretty cool. So, we'd like to thank everybody that has been using our Amazon links. Do you know about that? There is a link down below. If you click it, it takes you to Amazon. If you were going to go to Amazon anyway and purchase something, and you decided to click our link before you did that, guess what? It gives me a tip. So uh, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And you can also check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We have all of our arcade games that we have for sale up on there. I just put this up on there about 10 minutes ago. So it's always up to date. If the game's on there, it's for sale. If it's not, it's sold, folks. Uh, so go check that out. There's also a uh, parts page there. It says parts up at the top where we sell. Uh, we have links to some of the tools we use and items we use in our... Uh, uh, whenever we do our repairs and then we also have like some of our merchandise stuff so like our t-shirts and our coffee mugs and all that stuff so if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff for joe's video games go check it out so it's at lionsarcade.com now also check out my brother donnie who is literally my brother donnie <laughs> my brother donnie is a channel here on youtube it's our brother channel uh, my brother's crazier than I am, but he and I have, uh, we purchased this little store in downtown Jefferson, South Carolina. It's kind of like an old historic town. We purchased this old building, and we have been fixing it up. It's this uh, uh, little uh, grocery store. <laughs> We've been fixing up, trying to help revitalize the downtown area a little bit, and uh, we're renting it out. So go check out his channel if you haven't already, and if you... Uh, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and we'll see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed playing it. This is Midway's Space Invaders.